I was thinking back to when I was not as practicing, and I thought to myself, what was the main thing that really turned me into maybe a Muslim that's not as practicing and not really on their deen as much, compared to now, where alhamdulillah, I'm not saying anything to brag, but I'm a lot better on my deen. And I also looked at a lot of other people, and I realized that a lot of other people share the same experiences. There's one single thing that makes people turn from not really practicing Muslims, people who don't care that much, into real fully fleshed out Muslims who are focused on their deen. And this simple thing is knowledge. Knowledge is the thing that's holding your iman back. Or I should say, lack of knowledge is the thing that's holding your iman back. I mean, we could just look at the most righteous people in the world. I mean, if you think of an Islamic scholar, they're probably going to be the first thing on your mind when you think of a righteous Islamic person. And Allah even said in the Quran that the people of knowledge are the people who are high in rank. So throughout my transformation of trying to improve my iman, I realized that gaining knowledge was probably the most sensual thing to it. In my opinion, if you do not have the habit of gaining knowledge and you do that every single day, then you're really not improving your iman or you're definitely being held back. But I also thought, why is this? Why is knowledge so special and so singled out? Well, it's because of what knowledge does to a person. Let me give you an example. Let's say there was a person you saw at the masjid, a person who frequents the masjid, you know, just another regular old person. But let's say one day you figure out that he's actually a millionaire and not only he's a millionaire, but he also donates like thousands of dollars every single week. Now that you know the information that he's not only rich, but he's also very righteous and he's a giving person, you'll probably have a higher view of him. You'll think of him better and you'll probably have more love for him, even though maybe you've never even talked to him. That's because gaining knowledge gave you a clear picture of who he was. And you learned that he was actually a very righteous person and he's a person that maybe you want to be like. And it's actually the same thing with Allah. Of course, I'm not comparing Allah to a person, but the more you learn about Allah, the more you learn about the attributes of Allah, the more you love Allah because you'll realize that Allah is God. Allah is all-powerful. When you learn the name al raqib which is one of Allah's names, and it means the most watchful or the ever watchful, then you realize that even the sins that you do you know, in private, even the sins you do when no one's looking, Allah is looking. Allah is always watchful. So you're going to have that in your mind. So knowledge gives you a clear vision of reality in your religion. And one of the most powerful aspects of knowledge is also that it informs you about the good things and the good rewards of doing deeds. Take two people, for example. A person who knows about the rewards of salah, and so he's going to be way more inclined to do salah because he knows that, for example, the two sunnah before fajr is worth more than everything in this world. Now compare that to the person who has no knowledge of salah and therefore he has no reason to pray. I mean, at the end of the day, humans are incentive-based creatures and you have to give yourself an incentive to do good things like praying. And the way you do that is by gaining knowledge about them. And when you gain knowledge, you also learn about the consequences to doing certain acts, which is why gaining knowledge is a very easy way and simple way to break bad habits. If you have a bad habit of doing a certain sin, you can gain knowledge on that sin and that will make you more averse to it. It will make you more disgusted to it because you'll realize the consequences. But there's one important thing you need to know, which is that knowledge itself does not increase your iman. This is because Abu Bakr anhu said, that knowledge without action is actually useless. I mean, if you think about it, you could be a hafiz, but if you don't actually implement anything that you learn from Qur'an, then you're not going to have any benefit from being that. But it's just the fact that gaining knowledge is going to make you way more likely to do all of the good deeds. Maybe it's praying to hajjud, maybe it's praying salah, like sunnah prayers, or maybe it's giving charity. So it's going to make you get into good habits and break bad habits. And one of the best habits that you can add is learning sunnahs and du'as. And the reason why specifically sunnahs and du'as are so powerful is because these are things that you only have to learn once and you benefit from them forever. For example, if you learn the sunnah and the du'a for walking out of the uh, house and then walking in the house, which there's a specific du'a you're supposed to say and you're supposed to walk out with your left foot and walk in with your right foot, this is something that you only have to learn once and you'll be able to do it for the rest of your life and gain benefit from it. But the prerequisite to knowing this is of course gaining the knowledge. It's reading the hadith and memorizing the du'a associated with it. But once you just do that, just once, then you'll be able to benefit from it for the rest of your life. So imagine how much return on investment that is. And of course, one of the most important parts of knowledge is it protects us against bid'ah and kufr. In fact, I actually heard Abu Taymiyyah, which is a very popular uh, Islamic speaker in the UK, he said that I believe no Muslim should be taking a philosophy class without learning their religion first. And if you think about it, it does make sense. If you don't know your religion, you're going to be susceptible to all these people who are trying to attack Islam. And unfortunately, in the modern day, you're going to need to learn your religion because these people are very rampant. But unfortunately, a lot of times I see a very common misconception, which is that gaining knowledge is a complex and long and difficult process. 
but that actually is not true. See, you might have the opinion that to gain any bit of knowledge, you have to go out to Medina and do a whole four-year graduate program just to improve yourself at all. But really, it's not like that. Of course, going to Medina and doing all of that stuff is super powerful and you'll be able to accelerate your progress a lot. You don't have to do it. In fact, gaining knowledge is as easy as just reading a little bit every single day. Maybe it's reading Quran or reading Hadith because at the end of the day, this is what knowledge is. It's not what you learn from a professor, it's what you learn from the Prophet ﷺ. And that is distilled in Quran and Hadith. So the way you can gain knowledge right now, maybe right after watching this video, is simple. It's by reading Quran or verse with tafsir or translation every single day, or reading a little bit of Hadith every single day. Maybe it's just one Hadith. It sounds very small and simple, which it is, but this is the root of where all knowledge comes from. And also, learning the names of Allah and learning the attributes of Allah. Because as I said before, those things are going to make you love Allah a lot more and make you a lot more conscious of Allah, which is taqwa. And of course, maybe when you get more advanced, you can get into other books. There are a lot of other books I would recommend and I'll put some on the screen right now. But here's my challenge to you and here's your actionable step. is to read one hadith every single day. And you could do this right after watching this video. You know, go on sunnah.com. That's the website that I use. But it's so easy and so simple that it's unreasonable for you not to do it. And if you do this for the next week or 30 days, and inshallah you'll be able to make that a habit going forward, then honestly, after some time, you'll look back and realize that you're so much more knowledgeable just from this small habit. The Prophet ﷺ said that the best deeds are the ones done consistently. And the Salaf said that water can wear down rocks. If the water hits the rock consistently enough, it can erode it. And they use this as a metaphor for doing actions and specifically gaining knowledge. Gaining knowledge is hard, right? It's not going to be an easy thing. But if you do it consistently, you'll be able to make progress. Now, here's my advice for you people who want to be even extra and go the extra mile for your religion. It's to memorize specifically. Memorization is actually a lot more powerful than just reading books or reading hadiths. And even the Salaf used to say that we gained a lot more from a little bit of memorization compared to reading a lot. So, without a doubt, one of the best habits you can get into is trying to memorize the Qur'an and trying to become a hafiz, inshallah. And memorizing Qur'an, of course, it's going to be a difficult thing. It's not going to be easy. But it's actually going to be pretty simple because all you have to do is two things, which is memorize and revise. And you do these things every single day, you know, maybe just a little bit. And within time, within five, ten years, you only have to do a little bit every single day. And inshallah, you will become a hafiz. And of course, being a hafiz has so much barakah in it. In fact, Allah might just save you from certain things and give you certain risk and provision just because you are a hafiz. And the last thing I want to give you is three pieces of advice if you want to gain knowledge. And these three things, in my opinion, are probably the most important that you need to understand. The first one is that gaining knowledge is difficult and you need to work very, very hard. This is especially for those who want to become like a real, real student of knowledge. Not if you just want to read a few hadiths every single day. If you want to become a real student of knowledge and a real scholar, you're going to have to work very hard. Knowledge doesn't just come easily. You're going to have to scrape elbows. And there are stories where Imam Bukhari, one of the most famous imams that you probably heard of who collected hadith, used to go two or three weeks on horse traveling just to collect one singular hadith, which might have been a fake hadith. And so without a doubt, gaining knowledge is not going to be something you'll attain very easily. But inshallah, we will all be able to get it. The second piece of advice is a thing that every Muslim should be doing in any realm of their life, which is of course making dua to Allah. And there's a very famous dua for gaining knowledge specifically, which is Rabbi Zidni Ilma. If you're trying to gain knowledge, you should spam as much dua as possible, especially in your sujood, because that's the time when you're closest to Allah. And that's the time when your dua is especially likely to get accepted. And the last advice I'll give you is to stop sinning. There was a story with Imam Shafi'i, rahmatullahi alayhi, and he was a very well-known and very powerful memorizer. And even his teacher told him that knowledge was placed in your heart as a light, so don't extinguish it with sins. But there was a story where one time he looked at the ankles of a woman, and of course this was a sin, but that actually affected his memorization. He realized he forgot certain things. And so sins are one of the things that destroy your memorization. Especially if you're addicted to a certain sin, maybe it's a private sin, you're going to have a real hard time memorizing anything. Knowledge enters the pure heart a lot easier than the hard heart. So on your memorization and knowledge journey, you're going to have to cut down on your sins and change that aspect of your life. Anyways, that's all I have for this video. Don't forget to stop making dua to Allah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And also don't forget to check out the clean Islamic streetwear in the description.